Are you a Titano holder and you've been waiting for the Certic audit? Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at the audit. It dropped last night. I took a deep dive into it. I got all of the details for you. So stay tuned and enjoy the video. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Eric here and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a great day because if you're not and you're a Titano holder, well, let me assure you that your day is going to change because we're going to dive into that audit. It came out last night. We've been waiting for it for a very long time and now it is out and we're going to give you all of the details you need to know about this audit. So the first thing I want to do, I just want to quickly take a look at the price of Titano. The audit has been out for about a day now. Now, and we don't see anything negative on the price of Titano. If anything, we're seeing the volume is up about 16%. We're seeing a 24 hour volume of about 4.1 million and the price has actually gone up not too much. It's sitting right around 17.8 right now. So before we get into the audit, the way you can go about finding this one is you can go on Certic and do it there or you can come in to the Discord and it is obviously one of their announcements. And just before we dive into all of the details of this audit I want to say and they've said this in their announcement too so they say that they are happy to say that all of these findings in the audit will be mitigated with the launch of v2 and this is exactly what's written in the audit based on their comments as they are responding to everything Certic has pointed out so as we know the Certic audit was step one in order to understand everything that was happening and now step two is the migration to this v2 the version 2 titano token of titano which is going to come in the next weeks so I think I dragged this enough now. Let's go into the details of the audit. We are on certic.com slash project slash Titano, and we don't have a security score just yet. It is going to come in the next few days. It is just a bit of a delay, but we can see if we scroll down the Titano finance audits. And as we can see, if you click on the view PDF, you are going to be able to see the audit and it's loading up right now. And we're gonna dive into everything that you need to know. So let me zoom in here and let's go right ahead and dive into it. So the first thing, if you're wondering what was actually covered in this audit, well, they went ahead and they tested all the smart contracts against both uncommon and common attacks. Then they went ahead and they actually assessed the code base to ensure compliance with current best practices. Then they ensured that the contract was logical and it met the specifications and intentions of the client. Then they basically compared this smart contract to similar smart contracts out there. And the last thing and probably the most important one is that they've done a thorough line by line manual review of the entire code, which is awesome. And now let's get into the findings. So if we scroll all the way down here, these are the findings. Now, the first thing is that there are no critical findings. That is awesome. Then we see there's three major findings. There's two medium, one minor, and two to informational for a total of eight issues. Now they call them issues, but as we know with a V2 migration and the V2 contract of Titano, a lot of these issues are going to be addressed. So if we move on to the first major finding, this one is the initial token distribution. And as a problem or as Certic highlighted, this is basically that all of the Titano tokens are sent to the contract deployer when deploying the contract. And you may be asking yourself, well, Eric, the contract's already deployed. Why do I need to care about this? And this is basically because of the V2 contract that's coming. So then they say this could be a centralization risk as the deployer can distribute titano tokens without obtaining the consensus of the communities so then their recommendation is to be transparent regarding the initial token distribution process and that the team make enough effort to restrict the access of the private key so if you're wondering what is going to be done about this i have some good news for you because on the new titano v2 again when this migration happens for the initial distribution we will not keep 
account, the burn and the Unicrypt locker address as now our circulating supply is 2.76%. So what they will do is that they will mint 3% to just have enough supply in order to make sure everyone is okay and is able to migrate to V2. So right now our supply is 2.76. They're going to mint 3% of the total supply for the V2 tokens. Make sure there's enough excess for everybody to migrate. And once everybody has migrated to the V2 contract, they will go ahead and burn the rest of the Titano V2 tokens. As it says here, it will be sent to the burn address. So yes, you do have a bit excess here. If you do 3% minus 2.76, you're going to get 0.24%. If you're wondering where that's going, it's going to be sent to the burn address once everybody has migrated. So this is how they're going to go about migrating and how they are going to make sure that the contract deployer when deploying this v2 contract is not going to have an effect on the circulating supply and the total supply of titano v2 tokens so that is check number one in my opinion if we scroll down and we talk about major finding number two basically it says that in the contract the titano role as owner has the authority over a whole lot of different functions and any compromise to the owner account may allow hackers or people who have malicious intent to take advantage of this authority and if we just scroll down over the next few pages it essentially gives you what the owner contract has in terms of power and as we can see with this they have a whole lot of power from calling functions to setting different liquidity options to setting auto rebases to excluding people from rebases we see that the owner contract has a lot of power now what certic is recommending here is that they remove the whole centralized privilege of the owner contract because as we can see it has a whole lot of power they say to use smart contracts in order to make these functions more decentralized without having a one point of failure so they do have a few recommendations as far as for multi-signature wallets we know that that is also coming with the v2 token of titano so that is going to take place and it's going to remove having one person have access to this owner contract we are now going to have multiple people have to sign in in order to change anything which adds more security so you can see that is their short-term recommendation their long-term recommendation is actually a time lock and DAO. And here we can see that the introduction of a DAO governance slash voting module to increase the transparency and user involvement. So who knows if they actually plan on doing that in the future. I do believe in their roadmap, they kind of had a governance aspect to it. So we're going to have to wait and see. And as a permanent recommendation, they say to either renounce the ownership of that contract or remove the risky functionality. And as we can see, the Titano team has responded saying that they will send the ownership of the Titano V2 contract to a multi-signature contract. So three of five signatures required. Combination after migration is complete. Here you have the multi-signature contract address. So basically all of this means is that we are going to be more secure. We're going to have a multi-signature contract which means there's just more layers of security and not one person can just go in there and change everything you need three signatures to do whatever you want and now if we move on and talk about the last major finding of this audit, we are talking about the add liquidity function and this function is responsible for acquiring the generated LP tokens from the LP pool. So as a result, over time, the again owner address will accumulate a significant portion of the LP tokens. And if that is an externally owned account, which it is currently, well, the mishandling of that account could have a severe consequence on the protocol. So in this case, again, Certic strongly recommends that the centralized privileges or roles in a protocol be improved via a decentralized mechanism or smart contracts to again limit that one single failure of the owner address. And that is their recommendation. Again, saying a DAO or governance voting module would be an alternative here. And as well as having multi-signature wallets or a time lock with reasonable latency. 
Now, if we take a look at what Titano has said, they are aware that the liquidity receiver address is an externally owned account, which could theoretically be hacked and have a huge impact on the price. But again, with the V2 migration to the V2 Titano token, they are going to have a multi-signature contract, which is again going to remove this risk. Now, something else I want to make you guys realize is that yes, there is going to be a multi-signature contract, but that means that three of five people have to give access in order to make changes or have access to these addresses. So again, it doesn't mean that they don't have access to it. It's just that they're adding more security behind it by providing multi-signatures in order to access these addresses and also to make changes to the protocol. So just be aware of that it's not a foolproof method, but it's obviously probably the best thing we can have as opposed to renouncing the contract address or ownership. And if we talk about the medium finding here, we're talking about the fee distribution and Certix recommendation is to explain where the fees are distributed to. And obviously Titano has been super transparent with that. They give us a treasury wallet. They give us the risk-free value wallet. So we know what's going on. And again, here are some new contracts with the multi-signature contracts coming. And again, it's fully transparent here. So that in my opinion is not really a finding if you are invested in Titano, you know what's going on and you know where the fees are going. So if we talk about the last medium finding, we're talking about tokenomics and here it talks about the APY, the rebases and the max supply as well as the total supply of Titano. So if we start with point number one, it says that rebases are not guaranteed to happen every 30 minutes and they say because the rebase will be triggered when a token transfer happens or when the contract owner calls manual rebase. So if that doesn't happen, they're basically saying that you're not gonna get your rebase but Titano's team has responded and they say that regarding the automation of rebase rewards, the rebase function will automatically be handled by the auto rebase function and the auto task from open Zeppelin Defender, whatever the hell that is. But basically they are saying that this is an automated task that is going to happen every 30 minutes, which is happening from this here, which I'm not entirely sure about. I should probably do some more research, but I'm going to be satisfied with that and the point number two is that eventually the contract will stop yielding rewards once it reaches the maximum supply and if we take a look at that maximum supply it's 6.805 times 10 to the power of 10 which is an absurd number and then of course when that reaches or when that happens there are no longer going to be any rewards given out and that means that roughly titano supply is going to increase by about a thousand times every single single year which is kind of crazy and it reached its upper limit in four years so it's going to reach this number in four years and basically what titano had to say about that is that yes that is correct and intentional the titano token supply is limited and our intention is to distribute all rewards before the end of four years and that they plan on keeping this rebase every 30 minutes now i'm not too sure what their deflationary utility is going to be if they're going to continue burning tokens because obviously if we have a max supply and total supply of this number and we have a 17 cent token or potentially even higher it would be a crazy market cap so again we're going to have to wait and see what they plan on doing with their total supply and their deflationary utility but all in all that is the audit in a nutshell i know it was super detailed so if you guys have any questions let me know in the comment section below but just to summarize everything I did not particularly see anything that's huge and that would require an immediate action on our part. Again, this is my opinion. You guys could have seen something that I didn't. But as we know, with the migration towards the V2 contract of Titano, it is going to fix a lot of what Certic has pointed out in this audit and especially towards that security and multi-signature wallets, which is just going to add more security to Titano and the protocol and evidently to us holders. So with all that being said, I'm super excited that we're now going to be moving forward to that V2 migration. In my opinion, it's going to be in the weeks to come. That was basically what was holding up the migration. It was a Certic audit. We now have it. It's good to go in my opinion.
and then boom, we're on to V2. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Peace.